everyone, it's Darlene from Darlene's Creative Studio. I'm just going to show you a couple of tidbits and tricks that I've been using over the last couple of weeks. I just posted a picture to my Instagram of these little envelopes that I, little mini envelopes that I had made. And it's all because I was cleaning out my book pages and came across some fairly sturdy <clears throat> book pages. The paper was quite thick and this is from the back of a, a garden book and they were really nice and long um, book pages and I didn't know what to do with them. Um, I was going to throw them away. I'm just trying to clear out some space. I've got all these little bits and pieces of books and stuff and uh, so then I the pages were still together so it was one long page still and I found that if I put my template and drew my envelope on the folded page I could actually cut out two at a time so anyway I sat down yesterday cloudy day and uh, made a couple of envelope journals <clears throat> and what I've done I received I bought these at Michael's or uh, I can't remember where I got them from they were little um, mini envelopes and they're nice and sturdy but I like the size of them and instead of trying to make my own template and all that I just opened it up and created my own template and this is what I use when I take a book page and I'm just going to give you a quick sample here <clears throat> for my template and I literally just trace out the template onto the book page so if you come across an envelope that you buy at a store and you really like the shape of it and want to make some more or can't find them again I am um, actually bought a very similar envelope in the craft card stock which is what I like to use <clears throat> so I actually buy craft card stock and cut them out with my template and then it's just a matter of taking my scissors and cutting out the envelope now when I what I do is when I tear the books apart and it leaves the pages the signature together so you have a double page if I had two of these pages together when I'm cutting it out it would cut out two envelopes at a time and that's what I did with the gardening book I just simply cut two of them out at the same time and I normally will do draw all the templates onto the book pages and then when I'm sitting watching one of our Netflix series on TV at night my husband will drag me over to the TV and sit down and watch some crime drama. <laughs> um, I'll sit and cut these out while I'm watching TV. So that's basically what I do. I'm just going to quickly cut this guy out so I can show you. And then I use my scoreboard to make sure that I get along the folds. Um, I just lay it on top of my scoreboard. <clears throat> and I will score on my scoreboard this this fold them and then I'll do the sides and it's so much easier than trying to make up my own um, I do have an envelope uh, punch template that can make envelopes but they don't make this small a size um, I think this is two and three quarters inches so anyway <clears throat> I've been using this little template and I glue these all up and then I was distressing the edges and then I have this floral book it's um, a not a birthday book but it's a 365 days and each plant has a meaning so I was cutting these out and I was using them for some other tags that I've made let me just grab those and I'll show you those oh, they're under here this is my little tag bin under here see so I have little tag bins and this is where I keep most of my tags so I was making these little cards and envelopes. I'll probably glue this one in. So again, these are the floral cards that I was making with some of those as well. <clears throat> so I had some left over and I decided to add them, cut them down and add them to the front of these little mini envelopes. So I went ahead and did that. Now, to get the right size for the front of this um, envelope, 
I went through some of my, I have a folder that holds acetate and whenever I get some packaging that has a flat, the hard plastic, it's nice and sturdy and thick. This was on top of something, I can't remember what I bought, I think it was a jelly plate, but it had nice thick packaging and I actually will use this to cut out a template. So what I did was I cut out a plastic template that will be the shape or the size that will fit within the front of my little envelope and I don't know if you can see that very well there it is so it's just that sturdy plastic and then I just set it on top of these pages and so that I can get a nice the size that I want I just trace it with my pencil and then I cut them out because these were all different sizes these were the leftovers from the last of the batch so that actually fits on the front of my little envelope so I use this plastic to make templates for a lot of things um, I make the Edith Holden <clears throat> note card journals. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. I'm just making a new batch of Edith Holden note card journals. And I've done the exact same thing for the front of the note card journals. I've actually cut out a piece of the hard plastic so that when I take an Edith Holden page, <clears throat> just grab one here. Oops. Sorry, I can see what part of the page I can use for my front covers. Um, it's also great when I use the poems that are on the back of the pages to see whether the poem will fit within the size of my envelope. Some of the poems are quite large and they go right across the page, but if I can use this template and set it down and know that the poem will be within that square, and again, I just grab my pencil and I just quickly mark little lines and then I take it to my cutting machine and I'll just cut that out so then I know this will be on the front and will fit perfectly on the front of my note card journals. So this stuff is great to keep um, and then again use it for templates. Now I also punch out with my, let me just grab a scrap of cardstock. I keep all the little, my little scraps of cardstock and stuff. And set them in a bin and I will use it for cutting out tags so if I save some Edith Holden pages I will use some of these to cut out tags so I've got some here so all my scraps get saved and then I say I use a smaller tag for, or a smaller punch for cutting out smaller tags like so but I also use my postage two inch postage stamp and I save the scraps of my cardstock and I will punch out a stamp <clears throat> and then within this I need to use my one and a half inch square. Now this punch is the perfect size but it gives me so many little headaches it does not seem to want to punch properly. So I want that lovely little flower oh and of course it punches perfectly. <laughs> The one time that I'm, <laughs> of course, <laughs> it normally will just fold the paper in half and not punch properly. See, like that. Okay. So now all the edges of my paper have all these little, sometimes it doesn't even rip. It just keeps the little fold and I have to pull it out of the, of the punch. <clears throat> so again, I will make one of those little templates out of a piece of this. And that way I can lay it on top of the paper to see whether the image that is on the scrap will fit within that square and whether I can use it or not within the stamp. So I'm just going to turn that sideways, make sure I cut that out properly. All right. So there is my little square of acetate. And then when I get my scraps, or I'm just going to cut this properly so that I can show you. <clears throat> Use my voice, man, oh man. So now when I get my little scraps of paper and I want to see if that leaf will be within the square, I can hold it on top, <clears throat> excuse me, and know that I can punch that out and that will fit within my little postage stamp there. And again, I like to take my distress ink and just go around the edges a little tiny bit. We don't want too much there, but we want it to stand out just a little bit. 
so that when you put it on to the postage stamp it kind of stands out a little bit more rather than just plain. So that's what I save all these little scraps for and I do make templates out of the acetate. Just again, I mean, if you want to draw the square, you can, but it's normally just to see whether or not a piece of the image will look good on the, on the postage stamp. So that's um, a little tidbit that I use for the scraps and the acetate and the templates for my cards and old book pages. Again, these were the definitions of some of the flowers in the back of the book and I was just going to throw the pages away and then I've made up these little these little mini envelopes. So that's just a little tidbit. Um, I also have these index cards. Stay. Um, the lines are very very faint when you tea stain them the lines almost disappear. So I like to save those and put those through my printer and print something on the plain side and then it does have lines on the back. If I find that they're not um, usable, I will actually punch a tag out of the cardstock and then it has lines on the back. I'm just going to get really close to the edge here. <clears throat> so now I have a tag that has some lines on the back and then I can either stamp something or glue an image to the front of the tag and reuse that tag. I like to have the lines on the back so that people can write on the backs of the tags or have something that they can use at least on one side of the tag. So again, scraps, I've tea stained the card index cards whether I print on them or whether I just stamp them. That's what I do with some of my scraps. I've also used a um, scallop punch. These were from some of her um, cookery notebooks and garden notes notebooks. Um, they had lines. It's a planner and it has dates down the center. I've used those pages and you just cut out scallops and put those on the tops of the pages. I've also used the scallops to cut out some of the corner pieces and they will also go in the book, some of my note card journals, just as little decorations on the page. So I try and use up as many of the scraps as I can. Um, I don't like to throw these away. I would rather reuse them for something. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you can do with, these are some of the Edith Holden book pages that I really couldn't do anything with because they were, I had a lot of words on them and whatnot. So again, the same thing. I may just take one of these little flower images. Now I've lost everything because I've spread it all over my desk. Here it is. And put that on top a botanical picture on top and then reuse that within a notebook. So these are just some of the, the scrap pages that I've tried making little envelopes out of. Again, using my little template from one of my little note cards as well. When you are tearing apart your old books, this is something that um, I've cut out of uh, one of the old covers and I used the cover. The front of the books normally have a blank cover page. Um, now the Edith Holden, one of her books has the yellow floral and I use that for tabs. Um, I think it's her Nature's Diary. I can't find the little tabs but I always save the end paper so I keep a little pile of the, what I call the front pages of the, the books. Some of them are colored. Some of them are, this is like a cardstock feel, so I'll probably punch tags out of that. It's a nice um, tan colored. I'm not sure what book it was from, but there's tons of this white. Now most of the books come with this ivory color, and this is great for making those little mini envelopes as well. If you want a nice ivory colored little envelope, and I could probably get two envelopes out of that page just by shifting it around a little bit. So I save, again, all the little front pages um, they may, they're nice and um, discolored and they make great punches. These are from Edith Hol one of Edith Holden's notebooks. And I will probably cut, uh, cut um, tab, tabs from these. So I'll make some tabs from this color paper and use it inside on some of the journaling cards that I make so that they will have a nice little tab on the top. So again, I have a little file folder 
I like to try and keep all the little bits and pieces from from the books. Um, this is some other books that I use again, nice and thick, so they make great tabs. And then the nice creamy ivories and whites. I will use these for little envelopes. There's tons of them. Each book comes with these lovely creamy ivory colored front pages. And I will make envelopes out of these. I just like the, the look of the ivory. Tons and tons of them. So this pile here, let me get rid of that one. I will actually start to make envelopes out of as well. So I'll set that aside and probably work on that. And what I do is if I have projects that I can work on while I'm watching TV, trying to spend quality time with my husband, I will make a little pile and I have a tray in my living room that sits on my stool and I'll make a pile of different things that I want to work on. So if I want to trace templates onto the papers, I will put a pencil, the template in this paper and I'll just set it on my tray. That way when I go in to watch TV at night with my husband, I know that I've got some projects to work on that I won't waste time during the day when I have the house to myself and he's off golfing. Um, I can actually work on some of these little templates. So that's something I'll set aside. This is a lovely green paper with some lines in it. Again, would make fabulous tabs for inside some of the Edith Holden note notebooks. But here's some really large pieces. Again, sturdy, nice and thick. That one's thinner. So these will all be little envelopes that I make. So there's a little pile of stuff that I'll set aside for the evening to work on. And again, this book has the nice creamy page. And if it has a little bit of words on it, I'm trying to make sure that that part is on the inside of the envelope. So when it's all folded up, you won't see that. You'll just see the nice creamy. Now these are a little bit thinner, so these probably wouldn't make very good envelopes, but I will keep them and perhaps try them and see how well they, they come out. So as long as the paper is sturdy enough, it will turn into an envelope. And again, I will set aside this little pile of the, what I call end papers. Again, nice and thick and sturdy. Um, that will go, I'll set that aside with my tab punch. And again, while I'm watching TV, that will be a little project that I work on. One of the other things that I use a lot of, um, I found this old children's book and I, really like some of the pictures, but I like how big the fonts are in this. And I will go through, I will cut out some of the pictures if I will use them again for something else. But I like how big the font is so that I can cut words out. Now I have um, a little tin here. These are old Tetley tea, tea tins. And I cover them with scraps of Edith Holden paper. And this one is a travel paper that was from a scrapbooking. And this is what I use on my travel journals. So I like to take my travel journals and add some words to the fronts of the books. So I'll take the scenic route um, and then the Edith Holden note cards as well. I like to name each book rather than trying to go by the name of the cover. So these are all travel ones. And then I do cut some out of the Edith Holden pages, the text. Um, but a lot of the time there's not a lot of scraps left over because I use so much of the pages for um, punching for the little flowers and, and stuff like that. So this children's book is great. I just go through and, and look for Windy on the Hilltop, uh, something like that. I will cut that out and I will put it in this little Ziploc baggie and then I will distress the edges and that will go on the front of one of my Edith Holden, like above our heads. I would use that or down in the garden and that would be the name of the little notebook and I'll just add that to the front of the page. So this was again, I think it was a dollar. Um, the fellow was getting rid of it at one of our local bookstores and he had it on for a dollar and I just love it. It's got really, really large font. So again, this is another little project. I keep a little basket and as I come up with little projects, I throw it in the basket and then I'll just grab one or two of them out of the basket and take them out to the, the living room. So this will be another one, scissors and my book and that will sit in the tray and I'll be cutting out words and stuff as I watch. TV with my husband and coming up with some of the little words that I can use um, for the fronts of my books. One of the other things I like to do with um, my Edith Holden note card journals is make a little envelope for the front of the book out of one of the book pages. 
uh, one of the textbook pages because you can't really do too much with the text pages, um, especially the ones that look like they're handwritten. Um, so what I normally do is just take this and simple, simple, easy. You don't need a template and all that. I just take this and then I measure out. I actually had an envelope that I really liked and laid it out. So I knew kind of the size that I wanted. Normally, I for the book, when I tear the book pages out, I just cut a nice, nice straight edge along where I ripped it out. So again, it's about six and seven eighths. You just, that's the standard page width that you'll get. And then I'm just gonna cut this word June off the top so that doesn't show up. So I'm gonna make the page seven and three quarters tall. So basically you're just taking the normal page and you can just keep it as is. I'm just doing it this way because um, I measured it all out for myself. And all I'm gonna do is create two simple little side flaps and I do that at five eighths. So I'm just gonna score down the edges at five eighths. And then you want to decide um, what's going to show on the front of the envelope. So if this is the front of my envelope and this is the part that comes up, that's going to show, but I want it to be this way because I want the flap to be plain and I want the bottom to have words on it. So this is going to be my top. So I normally give myself about one and three quarter inches for my flap. And I'm going to fold that flap down. And then I'm going to make my envelopes probably about three and a half inches deep. So there's my three and a half and I'm going to fold that up. And it should overlap with your flap at some point. I don't want it to be too high because you want to be able to put something inside of it. So basically, see it doesn't overlap by much. But that's my basic envelope. And then I've got these score marks down the side. Those are gonna be the flaps that I turn in. And I'm literally just, I think I've shown you this before. This is the bottom flap. I'm just gonna make a slight, slight, I'm gonna cut this little corner scored out, but I'm gonna make a little tiny angle on the bottom just so that it gives it a little shape right to that bottom line. And the same on this side. I'm just going to cut toward that and I'm going to cut these little pieces off. I'm leaving the middle piece in and you can cut these at an angle just so that they don't rub against the bottom flap. And again on this side we're going to cut that on an angle. So there. There's our bottom. I'm just going to cut this guy a little bit more. There we go. So I've got some angles for my bottom. There's my top. Now the top flap, I'm just going to flip it over and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to cut it on an angle toward that little folded piece and then I'm going to cut it on an angle like so. So there's my, these are my side flaps and this is my top flap. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Cut it to that corner. Cut it on an angle. So there is basically an envelope and simple, easy to do out of a book page. You don't have to have a specific template. You just have to know the size of the width that you want, that it'll fit inside, and you want to know what the height of the envelope is going to be. And I'm just gonna round out my corners really quickly. Again, simple and easy, nothing too fancy. There we go. And then I'm gonna fold my side flaps in. Fold my bottom flap up, fold my top flap down, and there is a simple, simple envelope out of a book page. And it just, it's nice if you're doing, um, I'm just gonna turn this guy back. It's nice if you're doing a book that has a theme related, whether it's a botanical page or whatever, that you can keep the theme kind of going by just using one of the book pages as well. So that is how I've done the cute little envelope in the front of my Edith Holden note card. And then when I glue it in, I glue it in as a pocket. I will glue along the back edges like so, so that I can tuck something in behind it and still use the envelope as an envelope. And then I take some of my scrap pieces left over and I will actually put a 
picture on here and it'll be another little pocket. So I'll have a little pocket on the front, I'll have my envelope pocket, and I'll have a pocket at the back. Simple and easy to do, making an envelope out of a book page. And again, you always do your side flaps first. They can be larger if you want the envelope to be smaller, your flaps can be larger. But that was basically just using one of the Edith Holden book pages for the size of envelope that I wanted and then just folding it. Simple and easy. Okay, so I think that's everything. Some quick and easy tips, um, some little tidbits. I've been working on these Edith Holden note card journals and just kind of finishing them up and I thought I would share some of the little tips and tricks that I use. Thanks so much for watching and please subscribe to my channel.